Hello, my homies. Hello, my friends. Welcome to uh, Yoga with April. If you're new, welcome. Hang out with us, stick around, check out my older flows and get excited for the new ones coming out. And uh, if you've been chilling with me, if you've been flowing with me, thanks for coming back. So today we're going to conclude our yogi squat malasana pose uh, breakdown that we went over last week and we'll throw it into our yoga flow today. Uh, when I was plan planning this flow, it definitely turned into like obviously like hip openers. So it's a uh, really nice hip opening flow and we'll get into malasana pose yogi squat a few times. Um, and we'll just have some time to breathe and explore and play with some fun and funky transitions. And yeah, just make it a good time. So if you need props or anything like that, of course, as always, please go grab them. Um, ignore my dirty feet, okay? I'm just going to say it. Just don't even look at my dirty feet. But if you need props, please grab them. I'm not going to cue any specifically in class, but they're always welcomed for you to bring. Um, and blocks are always a safe bet. So if the ground is ever too far away from you, bring the ground up to you. Grab your blocks. Grab your yoga props. Uh, and we're going to start in a seated wide-legged forward fold. So oftentimes, if you have issues with starting in a seated wide-legged forward fold, I suggest a few different things. You can always grab, I'm like staring at the pillows in my living room. You can always grab a pillow to put under the booty so you elevate your hips a little bit more. That should help you uh, find more of a hinging motion with your hips. You can sit forward a little bit. Or you can always just find a deep bend in your knees, even bringing pillows under the knee ditches here as well, just to alleviate any uh, lower back pain you might experience in this seated fold too. But if you're kind of just chilling and you're good with a fold without any props, go ahead and find that. Use your mat, use your space how you would like to to start. I uh, always naturally move to the sides of my mat when I find a wide-legged forward fold. Because typically when you're in like classes like that, um, or in studio classes, nine times out of 10, I feel like you gotta use like your mat because you're practicing with so many friends around you. So yeah, we're just gonna start here. Find a couple moments to settle in. You might uh, feel the tendency, feel the need to sway a little left, sway a little right. When you start finding these little subtle movements, notice how your hips feel, how your sit bones feel. Try to keep them grounded a little bit. might even feel nice to crawl your hands forward again trying to hinge from your hips lead with your chest maybe pulse in and out for a few rounds one of my favorite things to do in a forward fold here as well and hopefully ideally you are in a space where you can sit up tall so you're not utilizing a lot of effort to find just an easy seat if this is just not an easy seat for you to start class with, go ahead and feel free to kind of cross the ankles, find that crisscross applesauce. Um, but it just doesn't feel right to not start with a few steady breaths. So we're gonna find stillness in this wide-legged forward fold uh, to being in our time together. So like I said, if you're okay in this seated wide-legged forward fold, rest your hands where it feels best. Maybe on the kneecaps, on the thighs. You can always bring them just in front of your thighs here too. You can always bring your hands on top of your heart space, maybe one hand on the heart, one hand on the belly to take note of the rise and fall with each inhalation and exhalation. However you wanna start is a-okay by me. And what we'll do today, we'll just do maybe three or four rounds. So we're gonna do a three-part inhale and a nice slow exhale. So when you think of this three-part inhale, I want you to think of sending that first part down to your belly then we move up to this midsection, the sides here a little bit as well. You'll feel that inflate. And then you ki you're kind of uh, finishing that puzzle, kind of completing that balloon towards the top of your chest. So coming into the heart space, letting that inflate here too. We'll hold that for a moment, bring gratitude into that space for a moment. Then we'll find a nice slow exhale as we let it go. So when you are ready, go ahead and find that last breath here at your own pace. Big breath in. Let it go. <sighs> now four rounds of that three-part inhale. Nice slow exhale. Start with me here. Breathe in just halfway. Breathe into your middle. Take it all the way to the top. Brief pause. And subtle sigh. <sighs> Three more like that. I'm just gonna cue with the breath, so inhale. Inhale, 
Last inhale. Slow exhale. Two more just like that. Inhale. Inhale, middle. Inhale, top. We hold. Let it go. Last one here. Inhale, belly. Inhale, middle. Inhale, top. We hold. Let it go. One more here for good measure. Just a big breath in. And slow exhale. Good. Welcome back to your practice. Welcome back to your present space. So we'll stay in this seated wide-legged forward fold, and we'll turn this into a nice little side stretch. So start by crawling your left hand down towards your left leg. Maybe it finds your left foot. Does not have to. And think of keeping that right sit bone anchored down here as well. And I just want you to start with building that connection towards the left side of your space as you invite some heaviness towards that right sit bone. And feel free to let your gaze stay down towards the ground here too. Now eventually you're going to flip that right palm up towards the ceiling, match it with a breath in, side lean over towards the left. So breath in, we side lean on over. Take time to find length for your right side. Feel some space develop in between the rib cages. Not rib cages, but in between the ribs. But we all mean what I meant. You know what I mean? It's fine. <laughs> Keep reaching through your right fingertips, palms facing the ground. Now from here, we're going to play with uh, some rotation for the torso here too. So stick with me, find a breath in, reach through your right fingers. And you're noticing right now your chest is more so facing the edge of your mat, the front of your mat. I want this right middle finger to touch the ground outside of your left ankle. So you're going to have to find that rotation through your torso to make that happen. And you might have to move that left hand out of the way a little bit here too. That's okay. But we're gonna, going to link this breath to movement. So when you find another breath in, invite that side lean back towards the left side of your space as you breathe into your right rib cage. Now, as we exhale, you find that slight rotation. Guide your right fingertips outside your left ankle. Two more like that. Inhale, you reach open back up through the heart space. Exhale, a little twist. One more with me here. Inhale, reach, gaze high. Exhale, twist. Find the ground beneath you. Hold for three, for two. And on one, we'll switch our sides right on out. Right hand will gently crawl down your right leg as you reach and lift through the left side. Notice where your gaze naturally wants to go and let it go there. So relaxing the neck, relaxing the face, unclenching the jaw. Make sure you are utilizing your left sit bone to help you find that anchor as you reach and lengthen, finding a breath. Letting space develop through the back body. Also breathing into those hamstrings here too. Now again, so we're gonna start with a breath in, try to gaze up. I kinda should have cued that on the other side, but you know, now we know. So breath in, you're gonna gaze up. And then as you find that breath out, invite that twist in. Your left fingertips go outside your right ankle. And finding three more like that, inhale, we reach, we lift. And then exhale, we invite that little twist in. Two more like that. Inhale, reach. Exhale, twist. Last full one. Inhale, reach. Now exhale, twist. We're going to hold. Push your fingertips into the mat. Ground down through your left sit bone. Beautiful. Come on back towards center. Let your hands fall on top of your legs. Roll your shoulders away from your ears. Big breath in. A nice slow exhale. Let that go. Now we're going to stay in the seated fold here for just a few moments longer. And we're going to find a uh, Supta Baddha Konasana, so butterfly pose. So it can be a little early for a butterfly pose. So if your hips are still a little tight, feel free to kind of sit up nice and tall. You might just gently place your hands on top of your knees. That added weight might be enough for your hips right now. Of course, if you're wanting more, let your hands grab your feet, your ankles, and go ahead and bow on down as you gently tuck your chin towards your chest. 
I have the tendency to pulse up and down a few moments when I first find my butterfly pose. Just seeing how things feel, seeing where that range is. And giving some love to your lower back this way too. Now you can either stay here or follow along with me. You're going to place your right elbow inside your right knee or left elbow inside your left knee. And then your right hand comes on the inside of your right knee and you gently just push into that space. Your gaze can go up towards the ceiling if that feels okay. Notice your left elbow bringing heaviness to the inner lining of your left leg, helping you stay grounded. And we gently switch that out. Place your right forearm down, left hand, left knee. Gently push into that space. Notice where you want to land, where enough is for you, and let yourself stay there. Good. One more time. We're going to come back towards center. Let your hands grab your ankles. Find a breath in. Gaze high. And as you exhale, we tuck and round. Just here for a few more moments. It might even feel nice to sway your head left to right, so getting into the back of your neck. And you'll gently pick it back up. If you need to come to the top of your mat, go ahead and kind of rotate yourself back towards the top of your space. Now bring your hands behind you as you set your feet onto the ground. Knees will point up towards the ceiling. Heel toe your feet towards the edges of your space and gently start to windshield wiper here. So dropping the knees left, letting them travel towards the right. Linger if that feels nice. Fieldy boy has found a fly and you know, we really got to get that fly, where'd it go? Good. Come on back towards center. Cross your ankles. Come to a forward fold top of your space. And I'm going to give you some freedom in this forward fold. So a forward fold of your choosing. If you want to catch opposite elbows, make this a ragdoll pose. If you want to just completely surrender into the space, let everything melt down towards your mat, you might just let yourself kind of ugh, kerplunk on down, shutting down the eyes. Notice if you can relax your jaw here a little bit. And see how it feels to invite a deep bend in one knee as you straighten the other leg. The leg you're straightening, try to seal the outer edge blade of that foot down. You might even get a nice IT band stretch that way too. Now meet me on back towards center. Heel toe your feet in here a little bit. Find a nice breath in as you root to rise. We stand up nice and tall. Push your hips forward slightly. And as you exhale, bring those hands right back through heart center. Another breath in, you're gonna find your reach. Nice slow breath out, we hinge and fold. Right foot's gonna stay at the top of your mat. Gently extend your left foot towards the back of your space, finding a runner's lunge. Now, of course, as always, I want you to invite some movement in. You'll think of driving your right knee forward, pushing your left heel back. And again, a perfect example here, if you like to use props and you have your blocks, bringing your hands on blocks would feel really nice here too. Now go ahead and keep your hands just as is, probably under the shoulders or a little bit forward, and we're gonna find some knee dips with our left knee. So try to keep that gaze forward, chest lifted, and drop your left knee down towards the mat. Gently pick it back up, finding two more like that. Meet me back towards that runner's lunge and we'll set this up for a modified pyramid pose. You're gonna fold over a straightening right leg. Gently push your front hip back as you reach and lift through your left heel. Find a breath in, find some length for your sides. Find that breath out, get nice and heavy here. Now go ahead and gaze towards the top of your space. Step and find a forward fold. Left foot's gonna meet your right. I encourage you again to find a nice deep bend in your knees just to release some of that pressure. Big inhale, let's bring it up. Reach through your fingertips. 
Nice. Exhale brings you back down. Lead with the chest. You'll inhale, halfway lift. Left foot's going to stay as is. We gently extend that right foot towards the back of our space and explore your movement here. I oftentimes like to try to remember to lead with the crown of my head. So what does that mean? So leading with the crown of your head is allowing the back of your neck to get some length. It's allowing your spine to find some more length. And it's giving you that nice focal point of energy from the crown of your head to that extended back heel. So reaching through the crown of your head, find stillness in your runner's lunge. Big breath in. And then exhale, right knee taps. Inhale brings you up. Exhale brings you down. Last one here, inhale up. Exhale tap. Inhale up. And then exhale, modified pyramid pose. We fold over straightening left leg. Straight is always, always, always relative in my class. And honestly, having a little bend in a limb, in a joint is not bad. If anything, you're working it more, you're finding activation, and you're building a deeper sense of awareness to your practice space. So don't feel as though you cannot invite bending into the knees, into the elbows, into the arms, wherever it might be. Now a little change here. We're gonna step this back to a plank pose. So left foot's gonna meet your right. We haven't done much on the wrist, so I'm not gonna keep us here too long. Stay here for three for two knees will come down here first untuck the toes lower all the way down to the belly now when you find your belly bring your hands about 10 to 2 separate the feet tint up on your fingertips breath in you rise up breath out you lower down a couple more rounds like that breath in you rise breath out you lower three more with me here inhale rise Exhale, lower. Last two, inhale. Exhale. Inhale, finding your gaze. Exhale, lower, nice and easy. Bring your hands under the shoulders. Squeeze your elbows close towards your sides. Feel your shoulder blades depress down towards the middle. And just breathe. Child's pose when you're ready. Hips go back towards your heels. Keep your hands towards the top of your space. Breathe into your sides. Feel yourself connect. Connect to the breath. Connect to your practice. Connect to the energy you brought into your space today. A downward facing dog when you're ready. Tuck the toes, lift up the knees, hike the hips on back. Think of your pointer fingers, let them point more towards the top of your mat. You'll gently find that rotation, externally rotating the fingers towards the edges of your space. You'll feel the thumb slightly pull towards center here too, that's okay. Always wanting to take a moment here to invite any authentic movement that feels right so noticing if you want to sway the hips a little bit, pedal out the heels, shake out the head. Assess how the back body is feeling. See if you can find more length for your spine as you straighten out the back body. Inviting a nice deep bend into the knees if you need to to make that happen. Now gently invite stillness into your downward facing dog as we find two steady breaths here. Big breath in, you fill up. Exhale, let it go. One more here, my friends. Breath in. And breath out. Next breath in, we raise that right foot up towards the sky. And as you exhale, step in between your thumbs, plant your back heel. We rise to reverse our warrior. Inhale, paint the sky. Linger for a moment, invite that bend back into your right knee. Reach behind you and also find that lifting quality for your right side. Right hip pulls back slightly, nice and active through that extended left leg. Very good, my friends. Inhale, find one more reach behind. And then exhale, find that side angle pose. Right forearm, right thigh, they will meet. 
I always like to say here too, gaze can be up or down, but notice if you gaze down, if your chest is naturally collapsing down here as well. If that's the case, I encourage you as much as you can, you might even just gaze towards, um, you know, the left side of your space, or if you're able to let your gaze go up because that's going to allow your chest to go up nice and high here too. And again, you're finding that reaching quality, so lengthening out, lengthening out through your left side. You gotta pull that right hip back and down one more moment here. Ground down into your right big toe. Now bring this into a skandasana back of your mat. So hands can plant to make that happen. Kind of crisscross applesauce, bring it on down. And we'll invite some stillness here for a moment, but we're gonna go from the front of our mat to the back of our mat. I just kind of call them like swing skandasanas. Um, and I'll show you here too. So while you linger for the next breath or two, I'll show you two different movements that you can do. So you can keep your hands on the ground the entire time, finding these swings, skandasanas, right? You can even have blocks under your hands here too. If you want to practice more mobility or just kind of challenge yourself in a new way to see what shows up, because you don't know until you try, you might even just keep your hands toward your heart center. And the goal here is to keep your hips nice and low as you move from left to right. So we'll start together. Come back into your left knee. You choose your path to the front of your mat. Hands can plant, hands can stay towards heart center, but eventually we come into that skandasana pose into our right side. And if you're up higher, more like that, uh, and you stay on the right side here, so we'll kind of equal out that time. If you're higher, you're higher, that's okay. Move how you can move today. Make your practice serve your body. Okay, so I'll give you a couple moments here to go from your right to left side and let your, I was going to say, let yourself look different. Let yourself be different. I always say that in um, in-person classes when I do stuff like this because we're not going to look the same. We're going to be um, different sides of your mat, exploring different paces, and just looking different, and that's okay. Good, come back into your left knee, plant the booty here. So we're finding a seat back of our mat and all we are doing, my friends, left knee drops. That's it. Outer edge of your left foot is now facing the ceiling, inner arch is on the ground. Pivot your chest over your extended right leg, find a breath in, reach up. And as you exhale, fold it on down. I am forever and always on my fingertips in this pose so I can push my fingertips into the ground beneath me and then find more of an anchoring quality, anchoring sensation for my right thigh. Now you can either stay here or we can explore a fun little wild thing variation. So we're gonna find that again, internal rotation so you can lift up your left knee. Right hand comes behind you. Your left hand's gonna fly up and behind you as well. Think uh, just a different variation of our wild thing. So lift up, lift up, lift up. Really driving through your left heel, ooh, left heel to make that happen, and maybe planting your right big toe. Good, bring it on down. And this, this is where we fight the good fight. Your butt is on the ground, we gotta get it off the ground. So get the booty off the ground, come back to the top of your space, and step back to downward facing dog. Now from your downward facing dog, crawl your hands back towards your feet. Heel toe your feet towards the left, towards the right. Drop it on down to your yogi squat, armalasana pose. And it's kind of the first one we've, we've explored today, and we haven't done the same work on our left side that we have on our right side. So take that into consideration when you feel into this first yogi squat. Notice if you have the tendency to want to sway a little bit like you see me doing here. You might just be enjoying stillness, closing down the eyes, finding your breath. Wherever you find yourself, your head is lifted, your chest is lifted, and your hips are nice and low. Now find some stillness here in this yogi squat, armalasana pose, fingertips reach up towards the ceiling, fight that fight here, lift the chest for five, four, three, two, and one, forward fold, let it go, heel toe the feet, extend the legs a little bit. Now from here, inhale, halfway lift, nice flat back. And now bring it back to that downward facing dog. From your downward facing dog, if you would like to clear this out with a vinyasa, feel free to do so. Levitate yourself forward, plank pose. And then exhale, you lower halfway down. Inhale and tuck those toes, upward facing dog. 
And then exhale back, downward facing dog. Very nice. One more breath in and out here. Now on your next inhale, left foot's going to lift. As you exhale, step in between the thumbs. Plant your right heel. Inhale, reverse that warrior. Paint the sky with your left hand. And notice if you can re-bend into your left knee. Waking up through the inner lining of your left leg. Feel expansive through your left lung. Exhale brings us into our side angle pose. Left forearm, left thigh, they will meet. Big, nice line of energy from that right side. See if you can feel lighter through the chest, lighter through the collarbones here as you reach through the heart space. Now my apologies, I will be facing the back of you, but we're coming to that skandasana back of our mat, so we're in our right knee here for a moment. And we're just hanging out. So sit into a skandasana that you might be able to invite some stillness for a moment. Letting everything catch up here. Giving yourself time in these poses, time in your practice. Now again, hands are no hands. We bring it to the top of our mat. So we're coming into that left knee. And we're going to hang out for a moment, right? What do I say in class usually? I've probably said it here on a video. Um, if we're not holding the pose for that long, I'm like, we're here for a good time. We're not for a long time. So have a good time. You know? Okay. From the left to the right, find your swing, skandasana. And remember, remember to have fun with this. So the goal here, the challenge, and it's going to look different for all of us, is to keep your hips low. So whatever you can do to keep those hips low, fighting and building that range in your skandasana, is where I want you to be. Now eventually we come back into your right side, drop the booty down, just let your right leg drop on down. Knee will plant, big inhale. And then exhale, forward fold over that extended left leg. Couple steady breaths here as you invite some stillness in. Breathe into your back body. Find some suppleness, a little bend in your left knee. Now you stay here if that feels nice. So if you want to explore that wild thing variation again, we have to bring our right foot back to the mat. Left hand plants behind you, probably right in line uh, with your left booty or left side of your booty. Your glutes, so I can sound more professional, your left glute. And then inhale, wild thing. Drive and lift through your right foot. Exhale, brings you back down. And here's the fun part. Try to reach forward. I know this is like work for people, right? Try to reach forward, big inhale. Uh, exhale, let it go. Find your drive. Beautiful work. Come back to the top of your space. Now this time, right foot's going to step to meet your left. We come right back into that yogi squat. I'm last in a pose. So now that we've worked both sides, we've had time to explore both sides. Saddle in. Hands might come towards heart center. Let your gaze drop down towards the bridge of your nose. Or maybe you just shut down your eyes. Let a steadiness come back into your breath. Let a clarity, wow. Let clarity come through with your inhales. Let the thoughts go with your exhales. Now that you've had a few moments in your yogi squat, malasana pose, especially if you took class last week, just bring those tips into the space, right? Like how is it kind of landing for you here, yeah? Toes will always point out. Knees will go in line with the toes. Hips drop nice and low. And we're just here for a steady three. Steady two. And on one, forward fold. Let that go. Nice job. Now I'm going to give you another second here in that yogi squat malasana pose. And I'll give you a choice. So if you are just vibing the squat game, 
vibe in the squat game. Do your thing, right? If you want to do some crow pose, a little arm balance just to spice up your class, um, go ahead and kind of work that here too because we're almost to the end of our time together here anyways. So yogi squat, hang out, do what you got to do. Crow pose, if you want to play with crow pose a little bit, you might click the feet on in. Make that little shelf with your triceps by bending your elbows. Knees will plant probably um, like on your triceps a little bit. They might be outside the triceps. If that's the case, if you're more so here, squeeze, squeeze, squeeze together like crazy. And then remember that lean. Remember your lift. Trust yourself. Lift the lower belly. Be with your breath. Find your focus. Point or flex your toes if you're lifted with me. When you're ready, <laughs> walk it back, jump it back, find your vinyasa, back to your down dog. Nice job, give me a breath. Press the shoulders back, breathe into your back body. Open up your jaw, shake out the head a little bit. Big breath in, the heels will lift. As you exhale, walk to the top of your space. Cross your ankles, bring it on down. I got wide-legged forward fold in the works, and then we'll find a twist, and then we're all set, my friends. But wide-legged forward fold. Bring it on back. See how this feels a little different? Um, I'll give you a moment to kind of bring stillness in if you would like to, so you might just sit here, find stillness, connect back to your breath, back to your space. Notice the bruises on you. And of course, if you like to move a little bit, you can move here too. Now you can either stay in that wide-legged forward fold or you can work this uh, fun little mobility work with me too. So it's just good for the hamstrings, good for the hip flexors. Sorry, this mic's just crazy right now. Good for the hamstrings, good for the hip flexors, but also good uh, for handstand work too, puppy press work. So if you're with me, you can just stay in your wide-legged forward fold and chill. No narrative behind it, do what you gotta do. But if you wanna kinda play a little bit and work, uh, work all that space we just made, you're going to let your hands frame your right thigh. Let your chest, excuse me, so I hope you didn't hear that burp. Let your chest pivot over that extended right leg. You're going to have the tendency, you're going to want to lean forward. I'm going to ask you to roll the shoulders away, pop up on the fingertips, activate your core to try to keep yourself in line. And we're just going to do some heel lifts. If you can't lift the heel, just drive the heel back and fight that fight and bring that activation still into your leg, okay? So when you're ready, breath in, breath out. <sighs> now you start to lift and lower for seven, six, five, four. Three, two, and one. Let it go. Nice job. I have not done those in a minute, and it can, or it can tell. I can tell. Okay, let's just get to the next side. Let's get this over with, right? <laughs> breath in. Breath out. <sighs> now when you're ready, find your lift. Find your lower seven. Six, five, four, three, two, and one, let it go, nice job. Find an inhale, reach up tall. And exhale, one more forward fold. Check out the head a little bit. And bring it back up when you're ready. Come back to the top of your mat, extend your legs out nice and long, and come to your back. You might bring the knees inside the chest. You might just gently place the feet on the mat but eventually, when you're ready, bring the knees inside the chest. Connect with your shins, the back of your thighs. Interlace your hands where it makes sense. Keep your knees as it is, cactus gold post your arms. So they're finding the ground beneath you. And then knees will drop left, will gaze right. Heavy through the shoulder blades, heavy through the torso. Heavy through the knees here, too, as you let them stack. Or 
right on back towards center. Take a moment. And when you're ready, your exhale will help you switch your sides. Knees will go right, our gaze will go left. Deep breaths here. I love a good twist. This is my first twist I found today too. And I teach tonight in person. You know we throw in twist in class. Information you don't need. Bring it on back towards center. A moment for you to set up for your Savasana pose. If you need a little legs up the wall for a second, maybe happy baby pose, cater to what you need. And eventually when you are ready, we find our last and final pose, our most important pose, yeah? Drop the shoulders away, tuck your chin towards your chest, elongate the back of your neck. Eyelids are heavy, thoughts are clear. Empty out your breath. Now big inhale. Hold for three, for two, on one, let it go. <sighs> Find your savasana here. Now, thank you so, so much for being a part of our community here, for following along with our classes, for sharing with your friends. Uh, it all means so, so much, always and forever. Um, we just wrapped up our eight-day meditation challenge at Rooted Renewal Wellness Retreats. Um, it was online, so anyone can join from anywhere. We do those challenges once a month. We always have a different theme. Next month will be our mobility challenge. They're free for everyone to join, and we have giveaways each month here, too. Um, so stay on the lookout for that. Follow us below. Um, I think that's it. We're so close to wrapping up all the loose ends with retreats and offerings that we cannot wait to share our little labor of love. Um, and yeah, let me know if I can help you out with anything, my friends. And I really hope you enjoyed class today. Peace.